The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. Mr. King for five. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thank the witnesses for your testimony. This has been one of the most interesting that I've been seated here in my more than a decade on this committee. Um, as, as I listen, uh, I'm listening to Mr. Naz Lazarus, and often your dialogue goes to the policy effect of this rather than being tied to the constitutional language or the statutory language, although you've referenced both. And uh, I'm curious as to what you think the limited powers of the president might be uh, given you grant him such latitude to amend Obamacare, extend the statutory deadline because it conforms with the broader intent of the law, and your reference to the intent of Congress that they really intended to allow for uh, the application of taxes and the, the distribution of refundable tax credits, even though Mr. Cannon testifies that that's not in the section that applies. So uh, from a broader perspective, could you tell me how you think the president's powers are limited? And I maybe just ask, does he have the power to lay and collect taxes? Well, first of all, I, I think that the president's powers are limited by what the statute provides. Um, and I, I, I think I've, I've said several times, I agree entirely that um, the president cannot simply refuse to uh, uh, apply or enforce a law for policy reasons. But can he, On the can other he regulate hand, commerce, can, for example? The president is obligated to phase in uh, a new law. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Lay, I hear that. But, but I'm trying to get to the constitutional limitations that you think the president has. Now, let me just bypass the enumerated powers with the exception of what would happen? And I'm concerned about Mr. Turley's statement that we get into a, a, a pretty dangerous area here if we don't have constitutional limitations. What if we just leap to the end of this thing? Is What if the president declared war? What if he assumed that authority? What is the recourse then? What would your counsel be to this Congress if we objected to such a thing? Or even if we objected to purely constitutional grounds and we thought it was a good policy decision and he vetoed our resolution to declare war? That should get us to the bottom of this discussion. Well, the President doesn't have the authority under the Constitution to Correct. declare war. Uh, the Congress does. The Congress has not been enormously eager to exercise that authority in, in my lifetime. Um, but uh, that's a very complicated subject, and it's the subject of well, thank you, Mr. Lazarus, interplay between Congress and, and, uh, uh, and the executive branch. There is a War, War Powers Act. There are disputes about how... Let me then pick it up from there, that, that I'm illustrating this point, that if there's an incremental march down through as a president overreaching his constitutional authority, in my opinion, I think the opinion of many people on this committee in this room, uh, he could assume among that any of the enumerated powers and the recourse that Congress would have all the way down to the declaration of war and the recourse that Congress would have would be pass a resolution of disapproval or we could shut off the funding through the power of the purse and the president's already assumed the power of the purse and so the next recourse is go to the courts and if we find out that uh, the courts do not grant standing for members of Congress then the next recourse is I think as Mr. Rosencrantz said the word that we don't like to say in this committee, and I'm not about to utter here in this particular hearing, uh, the balance I want to come to is ask Mr. Cannon this question. The frustration of this balance of powers because of the disrespect for the various branches, the, uh, the competing branches of government that come, and I'll argue that the Founding Fathers envisioned that each branch of government would jealously protect its po constitutional power and authority, and that static balance that would be there would be the definition of a brighter line between the three articles of the Constitution. But what's your suggestion on how, what, what then finally resolves this? I know we said elections, if the elections um, are affected by decisions of the executive branch, what do the people do who are the final arbiters of this Constitution if they're even frustrated by the election? Is this to me or to, or to I'm asking Mr. Cannon, please. I think it was to me. And you're, you're asking if, if there's no judicial remedy and there's no electoral remedy, what do the people do? Uh, mm -hmm. to, to what particular sort of abuses are you? Any one of the list of the enumerated powers, for example, ending with the declaration of war, because that's the starkest of all. There is a procedure in the Constitution that it allows uh, the people to amend the Constitution without going through Congress. Uh, that is that that is another um, uh, another method uh, where the people can try to restrain the executive. Let me suggest then, if that should happen, why would a why would an executive with such disrespect for the Constitution today honor an amended Constitution? 
from a constitutional convention? That is an excellent question. I think I'd like to turn to Mr. Turley and ask him if he's had a chance to reflect upon that earlier statement of the situation that we are in um, and where this goes. I, we need to look into this future and I'd, I'd ask that unanimous consent for that additional minute to ask each of the witnesses to tell us what's America look like in the next 25 years if we have executive upon executive that builds upon this this continual stretching or disregard of the constitutional restraints and the disrespect for Article 1. I start with Mr. Turley. And you may on. answer the question as quickly as you can. Okay. Uh, I, I, I really uh, have great trepidation of where we are heading because we are creating uh, a new system here, something that is not what well, was designed. We have this rising fourth branch in a system that's tripartite. Uh, the center of gravity is shifting, and that makes it unstable. And within that system, you have the rise of an uber presidency. Uh, there could be no greater danger for individual liberty. And I, I really think that the, the framers would be horrified by that shift because everything they dedicated themselves to was creating orbital balance, and we've lost it. Uh, as I've said before, I think the ultimate check is uh, elections, but uh, you know, I don't think you should be hesitant to speak the word in this room. A check on executive lawlessness is impeachment. And if you find that the president is willfully and repeatedly violating the Constitution, if on your hypothetical he were to declare war, I would think that would be a clear case for impeachment. Well, I guess uh, this is the first time I've uh, heard anyone c complain about the poss possibility that uh, this president is going to uh, unilaterally declare war uh, and be over-aggressive about that. I don't really think that's a, uh, much of a, a description of, of his uh, foreign policy. Um, but I, I, the Congress has lots of power if it chooses to use it. The power of the purse is an enormous power. Um, and um, I, I think that, that uh, if, if, if I were you, I'd, I'd find ways to uh, influence policy and in using the Congress's powers, which you're not doing. I mean, for example, we're hearing complaints about uh, the, the president's actions to um, uh, not, uh, in, uh, not enforce uh, deportation against a certain classes of, of, uh, of, of immigrants. Um, you know, the, instead of complaining about that, this committee could hold a markup and, and report out a comprehensive immigration reform bill, send it to the floor. Mr. Lazarus, you are uh, not you, but the questioner is two and a half minutes over. So if you can dispense with giving us advice on what our legislative agenda <laughs> should look like and answer the question, I'd be grateful to you. Okay. Well, uh, that, that, but that is an answer. I think that you know, Congress has a lot of power and it can use it. Okay. And I assume that the failure to exercise is also an exercise of power the failure to act. Mr. Cannon, would you like well, to briefly maybe, answer? Maybe Mr. Lazarus knows better than I do how many bombs the, the president has to drop without congressional authorization before that becomes war. Uh, I don't know the actual number. Uh, but I think what Mr. King was getting at is, you know, there is, there is one last uh, res, uh, res, uh, thing to which the people can resort if the government does not uh, respect the uh, the the restraints that the Constitution places on the government. Abraham Lincoln talked about our, our right to uh, alter our government or a revolutionary right to overthrow it. And that is certainly something that no one wants to contemplate. But uh, as I mentioned in my, in my, in my written and uh, my delivered testimony, if the people come to believe that the government is no longer constrained by the laws, then they will conclude that neither are they. That is why this is a very, very dangerous sort of thing for the, a, the a president to do, to wantonly ignore the laws, uh, to try to impose obligations on people that the legislature did not approve. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.